This isn't the project I planned on doing next, but here we are with the Dapol X Kitmaster Low Machine Wagon. I had planned to annoy the purists again by doing something with the old Hornby 00 signal box whilst I was taking a break from the Decapod. With only 16 pieces, several of which we're not even going to use in this kit, I think to make anything of it, it's going to be all about the painting. Although this kit's been around for what seems like eternity, I've never built one, so it's going to be new to me. We'll start by tidying up the edges and removing some of the ejector pin marks. They're on the underside, so we won't need to fill them because they'll be well out of sight. The first enhancement we'll do is add some brass bearing cups, drilling out the axle box in the rear with a two millimeter drill. The brass bearing cups aren't included in the kit, but I'll leave a link in the description below to where I get them from. When inserted into the two millimeter hole, they should just sit there quite nicely. Sometimes they need a little bit of pressing in, sometimes they fall out and need a little bit of glue to help them stay in. Next up is the chassis sides and they slot in quite nicely. Be careful though to make sure that they are flush with the end of the wagon. I think it might be nice for me to go and do a side project like a Tamiya kit of a tank or something. That way I could go and build something and have all the pieces connect together with slots that when they're connected, that's where it goes. There's no movement. Before I glue the other side on, I'm going to insert the wheel set and have a test fit just to make sure that the brass bearing cups are in the correct position and don't need adjusting. Happy that everything's lined up and ready to be glued up, we'll commence with that. Afterwards, I'll just set it on the table with a little bit of a weight on it to set the glue and make sure everything's nice and snug. Then we can tackle the problem that everybody seems to have with this wagon, the couplings. As the kit doesn't include a adapter of any sort, we're stuck with the old style couplings that won't connect to any of the modern tension lock couplings, which means you can't couple it to any of any other wagons unless you're with the old style. Or if you're using three link couplings. So I'm going to have to find a way of putting a tension lock coupler onto the wagon. Preferably a more modern one that's got an NEM pocket. I quite like the problem solving aspect of doing older kits like this. Even if they've been done by multiple people before and been well documented, I think it's the voyage of discovery. Not to say that I'm not occasionally stumped, not defeated, but stumped, which is why I haven't done anything with these. I'm still working through the solution. Deciding to go with a homemade NEM pocket. After doing the calculations and some test fitting, I'm going to start off with an 80 thou plasticard base, two bits of 60 thou square, seven millimeters long. Glue those to the base, equally distance apart at the very front. Evergreen styrene strip number 156 is almost perfectly the right size as a gauge to make sure the little pieces are the correct distance apart. A piece of 30 thou plasticard cut to the correct dimensions acts as a sort of roof for the two tabs that we've just put on. The trailing edge of this piece that we've just cut out needs to have a, a chamfer 45 degrees ish on the trailing edge otherwise it will interfere with the axle when we put those back in. If we dob a little bit of glue onto the coupling mount of the wagon, we can place our NEM pocket on, adjust it up to where we think we need to go. Measuring from the axle, we need five and a half millimeters to the front of our homemade NEM pocket. Obviously that measurement will be different if you use a different style of coupling. These ones that I'm using are Backman long straight. 
making sure that we haven't obstructed the wheel sets in any way and that they go round freely, we can put it on the track and test with our gauge and against contemporary rolling stock. Because we've used a coupling that's not three link or instanter, we're going to have to cut a little bit out of the buffer beam, something that I'm not overly happy with, but model railways on a whole is about compromise. The buffer beam glued into place, we can then turn our attention to the remaining detail parts, that being the coupling hook, the buffers, and the handbrake. I did consider using some aftermarket parts, i.e. the buffers and the handbrake lever, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this wagon once it's finished, either keep it or give it away. I'm not sure, I haven't decided yet. I put it on the scales after we'd finished and it was came out a little bit light, so with all of the channels that are underneath was perfect space to put some lead weights held into place with some styrene strip which glued to the sides also give the wagon a little bit more rigidity. And that's just enough weight to make it about the weight of an average ready to run model. Whilst taking a bath in warm soapy water, I read the book on these. That's the wagons in the water, not me. I have a shower. While you watched the black primer being applied, then followed by the now almost infamous not black base colour, I'll tell you about these wagons. Some of you may be quite surprised to find out that these wagons actually existed. They're not just a fictitious thing that Kitmaster produced. British Railways built 52 of them to diagram 244. Split into two lots, 2475 40 wagons and 2553 12 wagons built at Shildon in 1953-54 respectively. I'll put all this information in the description below. Most of them became redundant in the late 1960s and were consequently scrapped. The handful that remained went into departmental service and of those quite a uh, Quite a few were then heavily modified. We'll take a look at some pictures of those later on. The black base complete, I went over the wooden parts of the wagon with a light grey. Wasn't overly worried about the overspray at this point. Before I put the decals on, I measured them and then painted a flat back base that they could sit on. As you probably worked out, I'm building two of these at the moment, and I used the decals out of the kit for one of them, and then custom made another set for the other one. And it took me the same amount of time to custom make those transfers as what it did to build the kit. Bearing that in mind, I then let them dry and clear coated them immediately so that they wouldn't rub off. The one that I custom made the transfers for, I also applied a TOPS code. I'm okay with TOPS codes on the whole. I know the Z refers to departmental two axle wagons. I know the P is the brake code. I'm just a bit concerned about the Y in the middle. So the Y are on in the TOPS code, the only ones that I could find on Paul Bartlett's uh, fantastic website were the modified ones uh, with a uh, excavator body on top of them. So I'm not sure if the Y is correct for an unmodified one. I'm thinking of doing a video on TOPS codes, the stuff I know about anyway. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. Back to making it up as you go along, the wooden areas were then painted with with a very thin coat of buff. And when I say thin, I mean 50-50 water and paint. Once dry, I then hit it with another coat of equally thin light grey. And, and I'm still not worried about the overpainting at this stage because we can clean that up when we, when we do the metal work. 
even to my eye, at the moment, it doesn't look particularly great. And with what's coming up in the next bit when I do the edges, it all look even more disjointed. But you've got to trust the process. Weathering is all about layers. And the more layers you have, the better it is. Or so they keep telling me. I added some metallic paint to the brown, but it didn't quite go as I intended it to. I think there was probably too much metallic paint in it. I should have gone for four drops of brown and one drop of metallic. Anyway, loading the brush up and then offloading it onto some tissue. I then stippled that mixture onto the tread plates on the top of the wagon. I did mask off the wooden planks on the top of the wagon and I can't remember the last time I used masking tape on a project. I know it's some time ago. The metallic rust combination now dry. The masking tape was removed and the next process started which was adding a dark wash to all the panel lines on the wooden parts of the wagon. I'm not overly concerned about the splodgy nature of it because we'll blend that in with a dry brush in a moment or two. And what we'll do is draw that brush down the length of each plank, not to eradicate all of the excess wash, but to draw it into a sort of fake wood grain pattern. It works better if you leave the wash to dry for a couple of minutes. And if you keep uh, dabbing your paintbrush onto a tissue just to keep it dry. Then with the same wash, I did the sides of the wagons. First of all, finding all of the detail parts and then taking advantage of that old friend capillary action, making sure that it, the wash gets drawn into all of the crooks and crannies everywhere on the side. It's easier to see what's needs to be done after this stage is dried out completely. Sometimes you need to go over it a little bit more just to get a little bit more de definition. If you do go over it to refine the wash process again, it's still equally important to let it dry out completely. Before commencing with what is possibly becoming my favourite part of the process, weathering powders. Track rust is my favourite colour. And it seems to do whatever I want it to do on whatever model I've built. On the lower parts of this wagon, which are theoretically uh, metal, it applies really well in vast quantities or in small quantities, which is not the same when we move upstairs to the wooden parts. Talking of the upper side of the wagon, I used the same track rust for the tread plates on the ends of the wagon and then switched to metal slag. That was applied in very small quantities into the very corners where the metal joins the wood and then drawn down the middle of each of the panels trying to complement the brush strokes and wood effect that we created with the wash. And it's turned out rather well, even if I do say so myself. Trust the process. The more layers, the better. So I bought these kits for less than £10, which makes them really worth the money that they are. It took me about two and a half days to get them to the condition that they're in now, which is a lot longer than opening a box and then putting a ready-to-run model on your railway. However, there's so much more entertainment value in what we've just done. Before I go, I just want to say that after I built the last Lomac wagon, which I think was a Cambrian kit, I was asking if anybody could find a suitable digger type thing to go on it. I knew I had one, but couldn't find it. And about two days after I've produced that video, I did find it in a box. Now, I don't know who produced it. I know I bought it off of eBay for not very much. And at some stage 
in the near future I may well build it to and put it in a video. And after I do, it can join these two wagons and the one that I built previously by languishing in the same siding for long periods of time, just like their full size counterparts. This has been the Dapol Kitmaster low machine wagon. It's also been very enjoyable. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time.